ओं महाकाय सूर्यकोटि सूर्यकोटिश्रभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव सर्वकारेशु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभम कर्षा सिद्धिर्भवत मे सदा वागर्ता संपृक्त वागर्थ प्रतिपत्त जगत पितर वंदे पार्वती परमेशर धातु ब्रह्म संप्रोक्त जीव आख्यात मुच्य प्रकृति धातु ब्रह्मात्म नम Okay, so we were looking at the panchavrittis. Uh, panchavritti means there are five vrittis, vrittis, vipattis, or vigrahas to derive, to derive a base, whether a noun base or a verb base, from something else. For a dhatu, uh, the basic dhatus are two thousand, which are listed in the dhatu patha. If a dhatu is to be derived, <coughs> then you can use another pratipadika, which can be one of the Uh, derived pratipadikas themselves. So, uh, as in derived, as in uh, pratipadika is always, uh, almost always derived, uh, either from a dhatu, in which case it is called a krudanta pratipadika, or as a compound, in which case it is called a samasa, or with a pratyaya which indicates a tadhita uh, pratyaya which indicates a sambandha between two pratipadikas, two nouns, and uh, that is called a tadhita pratipadika. Then we saw there is an ekashesha where uh, one among many uh, nouns in a compound in a samasa is is retained, which carries the meaning of the other. Uh, so these are the pratipadikas from which a dhatu can also be derived, and that would be called as a sanadyad uh, sanadi anta dhatu sanadyad anta dhatu. Uh, so the pratyas are san etc. in a section of ashtadhyayi the uh, sutra patha. Where the pratyas are listed, in which meaning and uh, to what it can be added, and which pratyas can be added, what are the changes, etc. <clears throat> so sun, etc. Sun, young, and these uh, uh, the uh, sun dhatu uh, is added in the sense, usually in the sense of the desire, desire to uh, desire to do something, which is indicated in the, uh, by the kriya in the dhatu, the dhatus kriya. Uh, the action of the indicated by the dhatu that is what the san pratyaya so we saw mumuksha mumuksha is desire to be free because that much dhatu uh, says that it, it means to be freed so when you add a san dhatu you get uh, the dhatu in the sense mumuksha will be dhatu uh, which means uh, the dhatu uh, it means uh, to have a desire to be free that is what the to desire to be free not to have To desire to be free is the meaning of the new dhatu mumuksha, which is derived from uh, uh, from another uh, uh, not much dhatu actually, but then from another uh, noun which uh, the moksha. From that it is derived mumuksha, mokto mitcha, uh, mukta. So mokto mitcha mumuksha. That is how the uh, vritti will be. I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah. So so uh, we saw some of the. Uh, pratyas krit pratyas some of the tadhita uh, pratyas we'll just go through the samasas now and if we have time we'll go back to some variety of krits i'll just mention the krit in the beginning itself so that uh, we saw a couple of uh, some four pratyas the in krit also there are uh, there are divisions and they have a uh, name set of pratyas will be called as uh, say kritya pratyas the type will be kritya in krit pratyas kritya will be like yat kyap nyat tavya anir these are in the sense of karmani and bhave and we saw that in all karakas you can get uh, the uh, krit pratyas uh, see yat yat nyat yat nyat tavya anir these will have the sense of uh, additional sense uh, other than the karmani and bhave they can also have the uh, ability the capability to do something so fit to fit to be uh, done so nyaya will be that which is to be known in karmani or it can have an additional sense of uh, fit to be known something worthy of being known so that will be called as nyaya and so on karaniya kartavya these will have a uh, same sense kartavya karaniya will have a same sense karya kartavya karaniya so that yat pratya tavya tavya anir there is another uh, tav, uh, the content is tavya 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 anir all these are this kartavya and karaniya have the same sense 
meaning that which is to be done or that which is fit to be done. So additional meaning is that ability or fitness. Then truch, null and quip. We didn't see quip. I mentioned truch and null. These are kartari. In the sense, they kartari meaning they, when you derive the pratipadika and you decline it, it will have the sense of a agent of the action indicated by the dhatu. So kartari. Uh, so with truch you will get kartru pratipadika kartru bhoktru pramatru. So which will decline as karta, uh, bhokta, pramata. Pramata means the knower. Ma is to ma mane uh, to measure. Prama will be to know. It will mean to so knower. Nyatru, nyata. These are the words you will get with truch, meaning the agent of uh, the action indicated by the dhatu. Null will also have the same sense. Null will be replaced by akka. And you will get karaka with uh, kru dhatu, you will get karaka, so a doer. Nayaka, na, uh, nayaka actually, in the, it will be a, uh, somebody who leads, a leader, nayaka. Pavaka, pavaka, punj pavane, so from that dhatu, when it is a pavaka, it will have the sense of the action of purifying, uh, the agent of the action of purifying, so a purifier. Pavaka. So fire is a purifier uh, or ghee is a purifier, so thereby it will be called as a pavaka. Uh, quip, quip, pratyaya, quip, has, uh, quip pratyaya has no content, it is what is called, we call as zero pratyaya. So quip will come, to, uh, it will be added to a dhatu and then dhatu uh, itself will remain because, uh, but the dhatu will now be a uh, pratipadika. Quip will come and go, it will make whatever changes it has to make due to its content. Uh, due to its it letters, due to the indicatory or the packaging letters, the header, footer, whatever you want to call it, and that will make the changes in the dhatu, but then uh, at the end nothing else will remain. It will be like the dhatu itself, so it will, uh, quip will come and go as a zero pratya. Uh, so for example, sad dhatu, if you add, sad will remain sad, but uh, dhatu, after quip has been added, and then since it has no content, uh, Kakara is it, Pakara is it, and that V, uh, V is also it, thereby nothing will remain, uh, and uh, this Dhatu itself will appear as uh, as the noun. So Sad Dhatu will appear as Sad itself, and that, that Sad will mean now as Sad is the agent of the action Sad. So, so meaning the exister, one who exists, that's what it will mean, one who is Sad. And uh, another word which is uh, common uh, with a quip pratya, which we use a lot, is upanishad. Upa, upa plus ni. Upa ni purvaka sadhatu. Upa ni and sat will be upanishad. And then sakara will become murdhanya, it will become upanishad. Upanishad or upanishad. Dakara or takara ending. But it is, it is not a dhatu. It is a dhatu which has taken a quip and that quip has been dropped. So upanishad will mean a karta in, in feminine. So Kartri, Upanishad is a Kartri, so Shruti, Upanishad, Vedanta, uh, she is a Kartri who will, will do whatever it takes for uh, in the Upa plus Ni plus uh, Sadhatu, whatever is the meaning of those two Upasargas and the Sadhatu, she is the uh, doer of that action. That is what Upanishad means. Basically it is that which frees. There are a lot of meanings. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, that is the meaning of the uh, uh, the pratya quip. Basically, truch, null, and quip are make a karta out of it. Then there is something called nishta pratya. Nishta is ta and tavatu. Ta is in the sense of uh, karmani and rarely in the sense of kartari. Tavatu, because there are a lot of rules which will restrict it. It is bhute in the past tense. Tavatu is a uh, makes a karta. So what we say is that. Um, uh, uh, Krutavan, so you say Krutavan, Krutavat is the Pratiparika, Krutavat, uh, Bhuktavat, Patitavat, so one who uh, has, and again past tense only, so one who has already done. So Krutavan will be one who has already done in masculine, Krutavati will be one who has already done in feminine, D done something. So Bhuktavat, Bhuktavan and Bhuktavat in uh, neuter, so Bhuktavat, Bhuktavan, Bhuktavati in neuter, masculine and in feminine. In the past, in Sambhashana Sanskrita, these are the common pratyas used. Sat, sat is, this is uh, the uh, Sat Pratyas, Shatru, Shatru and Shanach are called the Sat Pratyas. Shatru, this is also very common, this is in the uh, Vartamana Kala and sometimes in Bhavishyat also, but Bhavishyat you add something else, 
So uh, you'll see something like this Bhavishyat. Uh, the Shya will be sitting in between. Otherwise, the Shatru and Shanach are in the sense of present tense and they are called as uh, Vartamana Krudanta. Vartamana Krudanta, uh, when you derive the word, it will be called as Vartamana Krudanta. Uh, Shatru, the content is At. At is the content of this. So Pach plus At will be Pachat. So one who cooks, one who is cooking, not cooks, one who is cooking, not a Karta. Uh, it will be uh, like this present present tense continuous. So one who is cooking Pachat. Pachan, Pachat and Pachanti, these are the forms in masculine, neuter and in Strilinga. Pachanti. I think Pachati is also possible if I uh, am not mistaken. Pachati or Pachanti, both forms are should be valid, I think. For Kruzhati, you will get uh, uh, Karishyat is one who is going to do. This Sha is added uh, to say that uh, it is in the future, one who is going to do now. Shanach will also be in the same uh, sense, but Shanach is usually added to a uh, Atmane Padidhati. So, Labhamana, the content will be Ana. And Ana, Ana takes a Makara in the beginning, so you get Mana. Uh, although the content is Ana, you get Mana, Lava Mana, one who is gaining. So one who is gaining, or generally when you translate it, uh, if it is going with the other words, it will just be as gaining, cooking. So while cooking, so you may say while cooking, Pachat. So uh, say Pachat Karoti, Pachat uh, Gayati, let's say um, Pachan Gayati. Pachan Gayati, if you say, so one who is cooking, you will not translate it that way. Uh, Gayati is the verb. So uh, you say that he sings. Pachan Gayati means cooking he sings. While cooking he sings. That is how you will translate it. That is the understanding of Shatrishanach, Satpratyas. Lut I had mentioned. Lut is the takes Ana, Bhavana, Karana, Asana. These are the Ana, Anantha that you will see. And these are in Napunsaka and in Bhave. Bhave, Karane, Adhikarane, these are possible. But any other Karaka except for Karta is also possible. Napunsaka Linga. Uh, I'll skip this. Tin. Tin is one Pratya which is common. Ghani and Tin they say. The Ghani is Pullinga and Tin is uh, Sri Linga. Uh, this can be, uh, now uh, the meaning can be uh, a lot. So uh, I can't just mention what meaning it is in. <coughs> twa. Twa. Uh, we have seen Twa. Uh, twa, the same pratya twa, which means having uh, done something, which is indicated by the dhatu with, to which it is added. So twa, if you say uh, you add twa to kru, kru dhatu, this, the content is twa, kakara is it, you will get krutva. So krutva, uh, krutva means having done, bhutva means having been, Pram, pranamya, pranamya, uh, pranam it means to salute. And so uh, this lyap, what, see, nam, nam is the dhatu here. Whenever a dhatu uh, takes a twa, and it also has an upasarga, except for uh, one upasarga, but a general rule is that whenever there is an upasarga, except for negation, negation, uh, which is called as nanj, except for negation, if any other upasarga is added to a dhatu which takes twa, then this twa is replaced by lyap. So lyap and twa have the same meaning. The only thing is that twa will be to a dhatu, and lep will be to a dhatu which is which has a upasarga meaning has a prefix. So nam dhatu if you add you will have natva. But if you have, have a upasarga pra then you will have pranam mya. Here is the content so you will get pranam mya. So natva and pranam mya have the same meanings except for the pra being an additional meaning for uh, so prakarshana nam mya. So prakarshana natva that is the meaning. Prakarshana natva will be the meaning. Uh, similarly see dnya. Nya plus twa will be nya twa plus v plus nya plus twa will become v plus nya plus ya. So you'll get vidnya ya. So vidnya has the same meaning as nya twa, having known. So that is the, these are the uh, pratyas for krit pratyas. I'll just quickly go through the uh, samasas, samasa section. Yes. Samasas. Okay, Samasas. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, before we go to Samasas, I'll just mention here. Samasas, basic types of Samasas we saw. There is an Avyayi Bhava, there is a Dvandva, uh, then there is a uh, Tatpurusha and Bhavuri. So the four types of Samasas we saw are 
समासाज और द्वंद्व द्वंद्व मेंशन अव्ययी भाव फर्स्ट अव्ययी भाव द्वंद्व तत्पुरुष एंड बहुरी सो व्हाट वी नीड टू नो नाउ इज अव्ययी भाव अव्ययी भाव अव्यय मीन्स अव्यय मीन्स एन इंडिक्लाइनेबल जनरली ट्रांसलेटेड टेक्निकली इट इज नॉट करेक्ट बट देन दैट्स हाउ वी ट्रांसलेटेड एंड दैट्स हाउ इट विल बी अंडरस्टूड फाइनली सो फॉर बेसिक क्लास इट इज ओके फॉर अव्यय भाव वॉट इट मीन्स इज दैट एन इंडिक्लाइनेबल वेन एन अव्यय प्रिसीड्स अ वर्ड सो वॉट इज अव्यय भाव मीन्स अव्यय प्लस देर इज समथिंग कॉल स्वी प्रत्यय दिस स्वी प्रत्यय आज मेन्शन इट This chi pratyah, what it does is when it is added, it is a tadhita pratyah. What it does is that it uh, it has the sense, and then it has uh, it takes a bhu dhatu or kru dhatu, etc. There are three dhatus that it can take. So it generally sees is seen with that, uh, not dhatu as it is, but then declined dhatu, uh, as in declined, as in you can have a tinganta or a or a subanta, uh, which will be there along with a word which takes a chi pratyah. and what it means is that what is not there it makes that so uh, let's say so avyaya avyaya so avyayi bhava will mean have the sense of uh, uh, anavyayam avyayi karoti so anavyayam avyayam karoti let's say anavyayam avyayam karoti so that which is not an avyaya it makes an avyaya so that is what an avyayi bhava samasa is that which is not an indeclinable it makes an indeclinable how that avyaya an indeclinable is added to another word to make a compound and then it makes the compound compounded word an avyaya indeclinable that is the basic meaning of avyayi bhava then dwandva dwandva is you just add together so what is here this meaning is what is not an indeclinable is made an indeclinable by compounding Okay, that's the uh, avyayi bhava samasa. Then dwandva, uh, dwandva is just adding uh, in the sense of in the sense of and multiple multiple words words are added in a are compounded in the sense of and. So and is the meaning. So uh, a and b and c and d will be added as a b c d. That is how the uh, dwandva compound works. Now here the rules are: it can be, it can be in. Uh, I had mentioned prani anga. So if, uh, uh, as a part of a, uh, the, uh, it can be in neuter singular. In case of uh, parts of a of a sentient uh, entity, prani. So I'm just transferring transferring prani as uh, prana jiva dharani. So sentient entity. Or uh, part, uh, I think uh, sena. I think uh, uh, parts of a sentient entity or parts of a uh, military. So military, uh, etc. So I'll just say etc. In that case, it can be. It uh, has to be neuter. It can be neuter. And then what is called as a, that will be called as it can be in new in neuter singular when uh, it can be. Uh, samahara dwandva what is called samahara dwandva samahara dwandva so this is the first variety samahara dwandva or it can be as this samahara dwandva samahara dwandva or itare itara dwandva itare itara dwandva samasa itare itara dwandva is uh, it retains the uh, retains the case uh, not case number gender and number so purusha and vachana number uh, the, the the compound the compounded word retains the gender and number uh, of the last member of the group of the compound rather this is a group group neuter singular so these are the two varieties like for example uh, here the example will be ramascha ram lakshmana uh, bharata 
Bharataha. This is how the declension will be. Or Rama Lakshmana in dual. Here it will be Luisa Pani Padam. So Pani Padam neuter first. So neuter one one. Tatpurusha. In Tatpurusha, uh, <coughs> Tatpurusha can be, see generally Tatpurusha is Uttara, uh, what we say Uttara Pada Pradhana. I mentioned there is uh, a Pura Pada and Uttara Pada. When you compound two things, you get uh, one is the Pura Pada, the earlier word, and the latter word is uh, the Uttara Pada. Uttara Pada Pradhana. So when you make an Anvaya, if I just add any word, how do you know uh, it is a Tatpurusha or a Bahuri? I'll just mention what is the difference between uh, Tatpurusha and Bahuri before we go further. The Tatpurusha, uh, Tatpurusha means that the Uttara Pada is Pradhana and Bahuri means Anya Pada Pradhana. Anya Pada Pradhana, which means uh, the other than the words of the compound is denoted. Uh, I'll explain the meaning. Uttara Pada Pradhana, see when you add two things, I'll take the same example for both. Take Rama and Ishwara. When you add Rama and Ishwara, there is a Guna Sandhi. Between Akara and Ikara, there will be Guna Sandhi and it will become A, Rameshwara. So Rameshwara is the word, the two, now this is the compounded word, Samasa. And Rama and Ishwara, there are two Padas here. Uttara Pada is Ishwara. Now when Uttara Pada is Pradhana, so when I add, Siddhatu Gachati. Okay, Gachati. This is the, uh, not Dhatu, a verb. When I add a Kriya Pada Gachati, then Gachati is Kartari Prayoga. I have to find out who is the Karta. Now, Karta is Rameshwaraha Gachati. When I decline Rameshwara, Ramaha, uh, Ramaha, Ramu, Ramaha, so I will get Rameshwaraha, Rameshwaru, Rameshwaraha. So, Rameshwaraha Gachati. When I say, if Rama is going, Ishwara is going, or uh, someone else is going. This is the question. Because this is possible in Sanskrit. If I say Rama, uh, in this, whether it is Puro Pada Pradhana, Puro Pada Pradhana, in Avyay Bhava, we say Puro Pada Pradhana, but then I, I would not like to use that. Here we say, just, I put it in bracket, uh, since it is a little questionable, Puro Pada Pradhana, but generally that's how uh, the understanding is. Here, in Tatpurusha, it has to be Uttara Pada Pradhana. It cannot be Puro Pada Pradhana. It will be Uttara Pada Pradhana. And uh, if it is not Uttara Pada Pradhana, and it is not an Avyayi Bhava, meaning Rama is not an Avyaya, Ishwara is not an Avyaya, so it cannot be uh, uh, Avyayi Bhava Samasa. I have not given the example for Avyayi Bhava. We will see it later. The, the word Rama is... Uh, the Puro Pada, Ishwara is the Uttara Pada, but none of them is an Avyaya. As in, it has to be Rama. The earlier word should have been an Avyaya to make it an Avyaya Bhava Samasa, but it is not an Avyaya. So it can be either Uttara Pada Pradhana or someone else. Neither Rama nor Ishwara is going. When I say Gachati, this is just to add. The sentence may not have Gachati. Sentence can have anything. But to analyze the Samasa, what kind of Samasa it is, you have to add a word. And Gachati is a good word to add. Gachati, it will give a uh, because uh, for various reasons, but Gachati, Bhavati can also be added, but uh, I prefer Gachati. You say, Rama Gachati va, Ishwara Gachati va. Uh, there you cannot ask Rama Gachati va. Here you have to ask Ishwara Gachati va or someone else. Someone else other than Ishwara Gachati va. Then, if it is someone else, then it will be Anya Pada Pradhana and thereby become Bahuri. If Ishwara is going, then it will be uh, Uttara Pada Pradhana and thereby Uttara Pada will become denoted by the word Gachati. So Ishwara Gachati. If the uh, conclusion here is, if I, here I have to ask, Kaha Gachati, who goes? So if I say who goes, the answer to that is Ishwara Gachati. Ishwara Gachati, then it will be, uh, it will be Uttara Pada Pradhana and thereby become uh, Tatpurusha compound. Now this Tatpurusha can also be various types. That Ramaha, Ramaha himself is Ishwara, then it will become what is called as Karmadharya. Although it's a separate set, I'll mention Karmadharya. So thereby, I'll say Ramaha also. So Ishwara Gachati and Ramaha Gachati. But they are not two people. 
two separate entities. If there are two separate entities, then it would have been Ramaha Lakshmana. It would have been a Dwanda Samasa. Rama Lakshmana. Uh, sorry, not Rama Lakshmana. Rama Ishwaro. Rameshwaro. It would have been, if it is Rameshwaro, then by the dual ending, you know that as a Dwandwa. It would be a Dwandwa uh, as a dual because, because it is dual. However, here is Rameshwara, singularities. That means Ramaha himself is Ishwara here in Karmadharya. So Ramaha uh, in one possibility. Ramaha, so what is the possibility? Ramaha himself is Ishwara. Then Ra, Ishwara Gachati, who is also equal to Ramaha Gachati, therefore uh, it will be Ramaha Cha Asau. Asau is that. Asau means that. To say that it is karma dara. If I say Ramaha cha Ishwarascha, Ishwarascha Gachati, I can't say. There I have to say Gachataha because dual. Then it would have been a Dwanda Samasa. But here it is the same Rama who is himself Ishwaraha. Ramaha cha Asau. So that, that Rama who is also Ishwara. This I have to add asa, Asau to say that. Same, same Ramaha who is also Ishwara. Meaning, they are in Samana Dikram. Rama himself is Ishwara. Rama and Ishwara are not different. Then it will become Karma Dharya. What is called as Karma Dharya? This is. So, analysis is Rameshwara Gachati. Rameshwara is a compound we are analyzing. So, Kaha Gachati, Ishwara Gachati equal to Ramaha Gachati. Therefore, Ramaha Cha Asau, Ishwara Asau. After Sandhi, it will be Ramascha. Ramascha Asau Ishwarascha Gachati. That is the Karma Dharya. This is Karma Dharya. Karma Dharya is also Tatpurusha. Karma Dharya Samasa. Now, if I say Ramaha Ishwara, Ishwara means Ishwara, he is a Lord. So, Rama, who is a Lord, earlier we said. But Lord of Rama, if I say Lord of Rama, then that is what is called as Shakti Tatpurusha. This now this Rama itself can connect in, now here it has connected in first case. This is the first case Samanda. The first case, in first case, the analysis Kaha Gachati. Okay. So first case Ishwara Gachati equal to Rama Gachati, Ramascha Asau. So Ramascha Asau Ishwara is a first case Samanda. This is a first case uh, Samanda here. So Ramascha so and I'll just say this issue we will land in Tatpurusha only when we say Rameshwara Gachati when we analyze the sentence Kaha Gachati who goes then we say Ishwara Gachati equal to Uttara Padana Pada Pradana therefore Tatpurusha then we say equal to Ramaha Gachati if it is same as the first first member of the uh, Tatpurusha uh, of the compound also then it will be a Karma Dharya Karma Dharya Samasa where both are in Samanadi Karna. Rama is equal to Ishara. Puropada is equal to the Uttarapada. But if Ramaha is in, now this Ramaha can connect with uh, Ishwara, uh, not Rama Ishwara, but in other cases, first word and second word can be in, have been second case Samanda, third case, fourth case, fifth case, sixth case, or seventh case. These are the all the possibilities of connection between Samanda between the first. First word, Rama and Ishwara second word. In Rama Ishwara it will not work, uh, but uh, uh, here this sixth case is possible. <clears throat> because Rama, uh, Rama in second case has to be a karma then. Ramaha, Rama Ishwara you cannot say. Rama Ishwara, uh, uh, Rama has to be a karma there. Then only it can go in second case. That is not possible. Second case is very restricted though. Third case you cannot say Rama in Gachati. Because if you say Rama in Gachati, Rama will have to be a kar kar karna. Karna or Hetu or something, that is not possible. Fourth case, Ra, Ramaya uh, Ishwaraha, it cannot be because uh, Ramaya, Ish, 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 the sentence has to make sense. Ramaya, but I am saying all sorts of possibilities exist when the words are different. So, Ramaya, fourth case, Samanda is not possible. So, you have to ask what is the connection between the first word and the second word when you analyze any Samasa. Uh, so, Ramaya Gachati is, would have been possible if uh, Ramaya Ishwara, Ramaya Ishwara would have been possible if the uh, first word, Puropada Rama, had a meaning of uh, as a Sampradhana, Sampradhana or for that purpose, for that purpose, Tadarthya, 
that kind of a possibility would have been there had the word had not been Rama but something else. Then fifth case Samanda, uh, you question whether it is possible, uh, Ramat. So Rama had Rama been the source of Ishwara, you would have said Ramat Ishwara. So it is not a source also. Then Saptami is possible. Saptami is possible if Rama is an Adhikarana of Ishwara, Rame Ishwara. But that is also not possible. So you land on Shashti. And generally the analysis should start from Shashti because Shashti is a Sammandha. Shashti is not a Karaka. Therefore Shashti almost always is possible. Then you refine the Shashti in what meaning. So Shashti as in sixth case is always possible because sixth case is a Sammandha between two nouns. And here uh, in Samasa there are two nouns. Therefore it has to be a Sammandha. What Sammandha you define later. You refine it later. First you say it, it, it is a possibility that it is Shashti. And if it is a Shashti then it has to be Tatpurusha. There can be a first case also that Rama is equal to Ishwara in which case there is no Sammandha. It is Tadatmi Sammandha. It is the same, same entity. It is a uh, Samana Adhikarana. There is no Sammandha really. There is no Sammandha if Rama himself is Ishwara. But the Vivaksha is to say that Rama is Lord of Rama. If you have to say Lord of Rama, then it will be Ramasya Ishwara. That is this Shashti, Ramasya Ishwara. Lord of Rama also. And there Ramasya Ishwara will be sixth case. That is the sixth case. Sixth case, Shashti. So Shashti Tatpurusha, you will get Shashti Tatpurusha. Tatpurusha is the compound here, which will mean what? Ramasya Ishwara. And there is a story related to this. I will not go into the story. But uh, Ramasya Ishwara will mean Shiva, equal to Shiva. Uh, in which case, okay, Ramasya Ishwara Gachyati. So, Shiva Gachyati. Here it will mean Ramasya Ishwara equal to Shiva, some Anyapada. It is not Anyapada though. It looks like an Anyapada. Now, this is tricky. If you say that Shiva is somewhere other than these compounded words Rama and Ishwara, then it would have been a Bahuri. But here it is Uttar Pada Pradhana. How? Because Shiva is Ishwara. Ishwara is Shiva. Ramasya Ishwara is also Shiva sitting outside you think. But he is not sitting. Or Shiva Gachati who is also Ishwara. Therefore Ishwara Gachati. Anvaya with Gachati is Ishwara Gachati. Kahasa Ishwara. Who is that Ishwara? Saha Shiva. So Shiva Gachati. Ishwara Gachati. Kasya Ishwara. Who is Ishwara? Ramasya Ishwara. So Ramasya Ishwara Gachati. Therefore Ishwara. The Anvaya of Gachati is with Ishwara. And thereby it will become Uttara Pada Pradhana. And then it will uh, be Tatpurusha. In Bahuri though, I am not dealing with other cases. Other cases we will deal when we look at the Samasa. I have just mentioned that all, all other possibilities exist. Uh, that will be too detailed. I don't want to go into details. But first case Samanda will be, uh, uh, will say Karma Dharaya. Second case will say uh, Dvitiya Tatpurusha. Third case will say Tritiya Tatpurusha. Fourth case, Chat, uh, Chaturthi Tatpurusha and so on. This is Shashti Tatpurusha. Now, Anyapada Pradhana, when, in, when will it be in Rameshwara itself? In the word Rameshwara, Rameshwara Gachati, Ramaha na Gachati, Ishwara na Gachati, someone else goes. Then it will be uh, Ramaha. Here it will be then Kaha Gachati, Ramaha, Ishwara, Yasya, Saha Gachati. So Gachati is in brackets since it Anvaya. So you say Gachati, who goes? Saha Gachati, someone else goes. Who is that? Who, for whom? That person is going now or that, that uh, entity is going. For whom Rama is Ishwara now. So the same uh, Ramasya Ishwara has now turned the meaning. It is not Shiva who is going but it is uh, it is Shiva who is going, but still the meaning is not Ramasya Ishwara. Shiva is going, but Shiva is not the part of the compound anymore. He is not Ishwara. He is the uh, he is that person for whom Rama is Ishwara. So the meaning is exactly opposite now. So Ramaha Ishwara Yasya Saha Gachati. Ra one who for whom Rama is the Lord, he is going. So that will also be Shiva. Shiva Gachati. Now, the difference between this Shiva, where Shiva Gachyati and this Shiva Gachyati, although the Anvaya is with Shiva, still Shiva is Ishwara here, which is the Uttarapada. Shiva himself is Ishwara because he is Lord of Rama and he goes. 
here though shiva goes but shiva is not lord of rama otherwise it would be uttara pada pradhan because ishwara api gachati ishwara not api shiva yah ishwara one the shiva who is ishwara he goes that would have been the case in tatpura uh, in the earlier case now it will be shiva who is not the ishwara who is going he is also not rama who is going so rama is not going ishwara is not going but shiva is going that means anya pada pradhan shiva who is not rama who is, he is neither rama nor ishwara he is going therefore anya pada pradhan then you will say uh, then you have to understand what is the sambandha between this ishwara and uh, uh, the shiva shiva who is sitting outside so sitting outside the compound then rama is not going ishwara is not going shiva is going shiva is anya pada and that will be denoted by gachati the verb therefore it will be anya pada pradhan and there will become bahurihi samasa and then we say then in that case generally generally there is this rama and ishwara will be in samana dikaran like a karma dharya rama equal to ishwara but neither rama is going or ishwara is going otherwise it would have become karma dharya if rama equal to ishwara and there is an anvaya with gachati it will be karma dharya like uh, ramascha asau ishwarascha gachati which we saw in the first case here in the karma dharya but and if it is ramascha ishwara it would have been shashti tatpurusha now it is rama ishwara as rama equal to ishwara rama equal to ishwara rama is lord for whom yes it means for whom sah gachati so this is the vigraha vakya this is what we call as vigraha vakya ramascha asau ishwarascha or ramasya ishwara or ishwara rama ishwara yasya this will be called as a vigraha vakya this is a bahuri and this yasya is a shashti just like there is ramasya shashti now this also can be in any case except first case except first case there can be any sambandha based on what kind of and what is that sambandha that is between the uh, compounded words and the word sitting outside the, the entity sitting outside and the entity is within the members within the compound and the member sitting outside the compound they have some kind of a relation if it is a shashti then it will be called as a uh, this yasya we don't call it as a shashti bhuvri or anything but uh, for easier understanding they, we use some nomenclature we use some uh, short forms uh, to understand uh that what is the connection between the uh, word outside and the members inside the member outside and the members in the compound so if it is a uh, six case sambandha then it will be rama ishwara yasya if it is a second case then it will be yam it cannot be first case if it is first case then it will mean this now this is very important there can never be a first case relation between a uh, the compounded words and one sitting outside otherwise it will become same as this ishwara ramasya ishwara sa shiva it will become first case connection will mean that uh, it is equal to what is in the compound thereby it will become become tatpurusha not bahuri bahuri always has to have either a second case third case fourth case fifth case or sixth case so there will say yam in second case uh, instead of yasya uh, otherwise it is yena 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 or in strilinga it will become yaya so uh, yam in second case in strilinga yam or yam in uh, neuter also uh, it will become based on what it is and it can be singular dual plural all this this yes sir this pronoun can be declined in any linga and any uh, any of the purushas purusha and vachana linga is purusha purusha and vachana however another thing you have to notice is that in bahuri other possibility for bahuri what you see is that this, if this word ishwara uh, any second the second word that which cannot change gender changes a gender based on what it is denoting so uh, uh, we'll look at example when we see that just notice that bahuri hi the gender of the compound will depend on the gender of the word so the way we saw here the gender of the here gender of the compound gender of the compound in tatpurusha i'll mention here itself uttara pada pradana and gender of the compound uh, gender of the last last member is the gender of the compound and here the gender of the gender and number also of course gender of the uh, other the denoted word is the gender of the compound this is how uh, the samasas are 
I'll uh, stop here with the samasas. We'll see more examples as as and when we go uh, in Tattva Bodha, because otherwise it will be uh, uh, because there's the Sanskrit itself is endless. In whatever little I know, also the classes will keep on going, and people who the purpose is to study get into Tattva Bodha. Uh, hopefully this uh, has in, inspired you enough. I'll just quickly go through what we looked at and what is important. We looked through ten lakaras. We looked through all lakaras, present tense, past tense, and uh, various meanings, moods of the lakaras, vidiling, load, all this. Uh, just go through this. Uh, in, initially, I have done some detail in the notes. Just go through that as to what lakaras are there and uh, what meanings they carry. We have not gone through examples much. Then, in vakya analysis, what is important is we have to find out the tingvanta pada. We have to find the verb and then check that verb declension, whether it is in atmane pada or atmane pada. Uh, uh, atmane padam or it is uh, if, if, if it is uh, so what is the declension first we have to identify the noun uh, sorry identify the verb and then to get to the uh, uh, the uh, atmane pada or a parasme pada we have identify if it is parasme pada uh, then it is definitely kartari prayoga we don't have to look further we reverse engineer by the uh the dhatu we get to the dhatu by looking at what changes have happened to the dhatu how do you identify you drop the tinganta pratya the uh, parasmai pada thing thing not tinganta thing pratya you drop the parasmai pratya if it is atmane you drop the atmane pratya but atmane pada pratya if it is an atme pada declension you have to be careful as to uh, it could be uh, kartari or karmani if it is an atmane padi dhatu and then it can be atmane declension but in if it is a parasmai padi dhatu also it can be a uh, atmane padi declension it can use an atmane pad, padam pratya and become an atmane pada sh shabda tinganta pada if it is a karmani prayoga so you have to identify the prayoga as soon as you hit the dhatu you have to identify which prayoga it is if it is karmani then you will see a here just before the thing you will see here like uh, kriyate that uh, kru dhatu Has, take, has taken y, y, and then you see te, te is atmani padi, but then y is sitting there. So y, unless it is in the fourth gana, it, in fourth gana and atmani dhatu, it can be a kartari prayoga also. But except for fourth gana, in any other gana, if you can find the dhatu, it, it is this is definitely a karmani prayoga, karmani or bhavi, both is possibility. So then you, the sentence analysis becomes easier. So first you find find out the verb. Then you find out uh, which uh, declension it is. Then you land on either kartari prayoga or karmani prayoga. If it is kartari prayoga, you look for a karta in first case. If it is karmani prayoga, you look for karma in first case. Now this karma or karta can be in any of the genders. So you have to know the nouns now. Which noun? Whether it is akaranta pullinga shabda, akaranta strilinga shabda. So we have seen the noun declension, some of these, or neuter uh, akaranta or the phala, phalam phale phalani. So you identify this word, and based on if it is kartari prayoga, then you have to look for the kartari prayoga. If it is gachchati or gachchata or gachchanti, you have to look for the exact number. It cannot be anything else. So gachchati, if it is the in singular, then you have to look for a karta in singular. If it is gachchanti, you have to look for a first case karta in uh, plural, and so on. In karmani prayoga also, karma you have to look for when based on now karmani is always in. Uh, it will be declined uh, uh, when you say that uh, say uh, uh, karmani prayoga and bhave prayoga bhave prayoga will always be in first uh, in singular but in karmani prayoga also you have to look at the karma in uh, whichever number that the uh, verb is in so if it is kri uh, say kriyate then you have to look for uh, karma in singular if it is at first case karma in first case in singular and the, the translation will be in passive voice Or if it is kriyante, then you have to look for uh, karma in plural, and so on and so forth. This is how you analyze. Then you, once you've got the basic sentence, kartari or karmani prayoga, then it will it will be the basic sentence. Then you add, keep on adding the other words and see which case and which relation it is, whether it is a karaka or a non-karaka. Generally, we don't worry about karaka or non-karaka uh, as long as you have understood the meaning. Then you look for the second case meaning, third case, fourth case. Whether it's instrumental or hetu, kritiya can be hetu also. If meanwhile, if you hit an avyaya which is indeclinable, then avyaya you have to find out that avyayas themselves can govern a particular case. Some avyayas like anu govern second case, 
So you may see uh, um, second case, some, uh, you have to look for a second word in second case, declined in second case to identify the Anvaya with Anu, this, the Avyaya. So Avyayas will govern particular cases. So Vina, Vina will govern third case, sixth case, uh, or even second case sometimes. So you have to identify Avyayas also and fill in the words to make a Anvaya, which means the organization of the word. I have not uh, mentioned any Anvaya so far. We'll see Anvayas in Tattvobodha. We have mentioned some sentences, we have seen a couple of sentences when we are making up the, all the cases, meanings of the cases. Then we saw some uh, sandhis, atsandhi, we saw atsandhi and we saw uh, the hal sandhi and within hal sandhi we saw visarga sandhi also, how the, in pronunciation the words change, uh, letters change due to sandhi. Uh, I think uh, uh, you will stop here. We'll continue with Tattvabodha next time onwards and in Tattvabodha I'll try to explain the words uh, and the sentence formation as and when needed. We, look, we looked at Samasas, we looked at Panchavruttis, what kind of word it is I'll try to uh, mention in Tattvabodha while we deal with the text. So next class onwards we'll start with uh, Tattvabodha. Okay, so uh, anyway, I think the screen had not changed for some reason. But anyway, there is not much on the uh, on the notes. Uh, most of that I had explained through books. These books are shared. Those who are more interested can go through the books. They are very readable books. Uh, and uh, especially the charts, you can either print the charts or look look through the charts which are given so that uh, they are easy look up. Anyway, hopefully this class has been useful at least to get inspired or get started off. And uh, we'll see how useful it has been when we go to Tattvabodha. I'll try to go slow in Tattvabodha, but uh, you know, trying to explain Sanskrit within that. But then the focus will be more on Vedanta, so that uh, you can get started with uh, Vedanta text, which is the purpose of any any study, especially Vyakarana also. So Vyakarana is not for the purpose of Vyakarana, it is for the purpose of Shastras only. And all Shastras are for the purpose of Vedanta. Tattvabodha is the most basic text you will find in Vedanta. So we'll start on Monday with Tattvabodha. Please try to be on time and uh, try to attend all classes or at least go through recordings if not possible. Um, so that uh, there is some, uh, some Sampradayak understanding when you go through other books. Okay, I'll stop here. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Any questions? No questions. Okay, I'll see you on Monday. Namaste.